Hello, and welcome to a numbers edition of Apple A Day. This episode continues my series on text functions for Apple numbers. Today, I'll be covering text before and text after. So text before searches a given text string for the specified search string. And if it finds it, all of the text to the left of the found text is returned. This is much easier to explain with a demonstration, so let's do that now. In the numbers document I have open, the first column contains some sample data in the form of product codes. So let's say I want to return the product code prefix. Now, in my tutorial on the left, right, and mid functions, I used the left function to return the left four characters of a product code. And that worked because the structure of the product codes was consistent. The prefix was always four characters for every code. But here, we have a variable prefix length, so the left function won't work. But it's really easy to do using text before. In the prefix column, I'm going to create a new formula by pressing the equal sign. Then I'll type in the function name, text before, and press return. This takes three parameters. The first one, source string, is the text string to be searched. And the second parameter is the search string. This is the text that we're searching for within the source string. And the last parameter, called occurrence, is an optional parameter. I'll be going over this momentarily, so for now, I'll just ignore it. So for the source string, I'll select the first cell under the product code. Then press tab to move to the search string parameter. So we want to search for the hyphen, which acts as a delimiter between the prefix and the next section of the product code. I'll just type in a hyphen in double quotes. And as I said, I'm going to ignore the occurrence parameter. So I'll just press return to close the formula editor. And there's my prefix. It worked perfectly. Just like the function name implies, we got all of the text before the hyphen. I'll just copy and paste this into the rest of the cells in the column. And you can see that text before searched for the first occurrence of a hyphen and returned all of the text to the left of the hyphen for each of these product codes. Let's talk about the occurrence parameter. This comes into play when the search string exists more than once in the source string. So using these product codes as an example, the hyphen exists more than once. If occurrence is not specified, it defaults to one, meaning it will default to find the first occurrence of the search string. So what happens when we look for the second instance? I'll add a new formula under the testing column by typing in the equal sign. I'll enter in text before again and press return. Then select the product code and press tab. Type in a hyphen and double quotes for the search string. Press tab again and this time enter two for the occurrence. I'll press return and see what happens. It returned everything to the left of the second instance of the hyphen. And of course, if I change the occurrence to three, it would return everything left of the third occurrence, and so on. You can also type in a negative number for occurrence. I'll double click on the formula to edit it and change occurrence to minus one, and then press return to see what happens. It looks like it returned everything left of the third occurrence of the hyphen. I guess technically that's what the result implies, but what's really going on is the minus one made it search for the last instance of the search string. So in this case, the very last hyphen, and then it returned everything to the left of that. If I typed in minus two, it would find the second last instance, and so on. So positive numbers start the search from the beginning of the source string, and negative numbers start the search from the end. To reiterate, one is the first occurrence, minus one is the last occurrence. Hopefully that all makes sense. Okay, so let's move on to text after. As I'm sure you can guess, it works the same as text before, with the only difference being that the text to the right is returned. I'll demonstrate. In the suffix column, I'll create a new formula by typing in the equal sign. I'll type in text after and press return. And for the source string, I'll select the product code again, press tab and enter a hyphen in double quotes for the search string, and then press tab again to go to the occurrence parameter. So what I'm trying to do here is return the suffix of this product code. So I want everything after the last hyphen. We just learned that minus one will search for the last instance of the search string. So entering minus one will find this last hyphen and text after should return everything to the right of that hyphen. So let's try it. I'll type in minus one and press return. And that worked. I got the suffix. I'll copy that formula to the rest of the cells. And now we have the suffix value for each one of these regardless of the number of hyphens that are in the product codes or the length of the suffix itself. So incredibly handy. 
I just have a few more things to go over. I'm gonna scroll down to my next example. I have some text here, and in the next column, I'll type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor. I'll type in text before and press return. I'll select this text cell and press tab. And for the search string, I'm gonna type in an entire word. The search string does not have to be just a single character. I'll type in rebel in double quotes and then press tab and type in one for the occurrence. I'll press return and as expected, I get the text to the left of the word rebel. So what happens if you use an occurrence value where the text doesn't exist? Let's try it. I'll double click on the formula to edit it and I'll change the occurrence from a one to a three. And if we quickly look at this text, we know that rebel is only in there once, so it's not in there a third time. I'll press return and we get an error. If I click on the error, it basically just says that only one match was found. It's a shame that it doesn't just return an empty string because now we have to handle the error. We can do that quickly by using the if error function to resolve the issue. I've already done a tutorial on if error and that can be found here. I'll also include a link to it in the description. So once again, I'll double click on the formula to edit it. At the very beginning, I'll type in the function name if error and then an opening bracket. Then I'm gonna move all the way to the end of the line and type in a comma and then two double quotes, which is basically just an empty string, then a closing bracket. So if error takes two parameters. The first parameter is the text before function and the second parameter is what's returned if an error occurs. I'll press return and the error message is gone and we just have a blank cell. Problem solved. This is useful if the source string structure is not consistent and it might not have the same number of occurrences of a search string from item to item. All right, so that pretty much covers text before and text after. In my next tutorial, I'll be going over the text between function, which is similar to text before and text after. Until then, please like, subscribe, and comment. My name is John Martins. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple a Day.